Next up, Bitcoin's getting two major improvements in code. That's big because it rarely happens. So what's going on? The much-awaited Schnorr and Taproot proposals, first of all, horrible name, Schnorr, were implemented to Bitcoin Core earlier today as per history available on GitHub to check it out. When activated, they will bring about better transactional capabilities, that's huge, to Bitcoin while increasing the network's privacy features. So that's enormous. We're going to have better transaction and more privacy features on Bitcoin. Uh, who doesn't want that? I've been uh, a big negative Nelly about the ability of Bitcoin to be an actual currency uh, because I always talk about in 2017 what happened uh, when people started to use it more and more and more. The fees were became outrageous and the transaction times uh, were just ridiculously uh, slow. It Sometimes it would take days to move Bitcoin. That's not what it was developed for. So if this happens, I will be uh, eating some crow <laughs> if this can actually happen. But it's an exciting time. Hopefully it does. So as far as testing, they've undergone one month of testing. Hopefully they do months, but whatever. The Taproot proposal alone saw over 150 developers reviewing the code. And that's one of the big things about, about Bitcoin. It moves slow. It moves slow because they're very cautious. And there's two ways of thinking about it. Be cautious and be perfect and then release it. Cardano does the same type of thing. Or just start building, throw it out there and see what breaks. And that's kind of the theory behind Yearn and Wi-Fi and uh, Cronhey, the uh, developer or the uh, founder that did that. They just say, hey, uh, is like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do a test net. I'm just going to start building, throw it out there and whatever breaks, I'll fix it later. And it, it keeps breaking. Of course, he fixes it. The problem is it gets hacked and people lose money. And that's a big thing. So there's advantages and disadvantages for both ways of doing it. But uh, I mean, that's above my pay grade. So I kind of do like this um, conservative approach a little bit more because I'm a little bit more uh, on that side. But uh, everybody's got their own opinion. Anyhow. Moving down, Schnorr is an alternative to Bitcoin's current multi-signature wallet mechanism, which, as the name suggests, uses multiple private keys to facilitate a transaction from a Bitcoin wallet. However, the Schnorr update combines multiple keys to a single key when a user transacts using Schnorr. This significantly reduces the data size of multi-sig payments and helps decongest the network. So essentially they kind of go in reverse, it sounds like to me, but it does reduce the conge congestion. Maybe the TPS or transactions per second will actually be increased. And that's good news, I suppose. Taproot takes Schnorr further by introducing a new transaction output version and new ways for users to define conditions for when they spend Bitcoin, which one advantage that of even following users under very certain conditions, they can regain their lost coins. Let me say that again. Under very certain conditions, you can regain access to their lost coins. And this is huge because if you look at how much Bitcoin, this is all debatable, uh, how much has actually been lost. In 2010, 11, 12, people were throwing away their computers with Bitcoin on it because they're like, it's only like worth pennies, you know? So why would I keep it around? And uh, PCs sometimes break down and it's easier to throw them away and not transfer anything. So we've probably lost who knows, two to four million, six million on the high end, if you believe some studies. And we're going to go over that in the uh, next article about who, about the uh, 1% to be a Bitcoiner. But um, I think this is enormous because this is one of those barriers to entry that we talk about as far as people getting into cryptocurrency digital assets, which is, hey, if I send it to the wrong person or the wrong address or just screw up, it's gone, right? I can't call customer service like I can with my bank. Yep, that's right. So if you screw up, uh, it's gone. And that's one of those things about becoming your own bank. It's a pain. It is a little bit of a pain because we rely on the banks to do all these different types of things. But there are the advantages of being your own bank and being in charge of everything and not getting screwed over by the big bankers. And this is just one of those problems. So I think it's interesting that this is going to, they're going to allow to access lost coins. I don't know how it's going to work. We'll see how it all gets rolled out. But again, this is a, it's a pretty big deal because there's very rare times when Bitcoin gets any upgrade or any type of new code because it takes so long to do things. So we'll see how it all works out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's move on to the last article.